So Roblox just announced a pretty big update for Studio and it's a gamepad controller emulator, meaning that you will need the physical device, which is pretty great. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page for exclusive content, and let's get into the video. So here I'm just going to overview the dev forum post about the studio beta feature which is the previously mentioned gamepad controller emulator, where the Roblox staff are saying that they are free to announce a gamepad emulator which is now available in studio beta, and they developed the gamepad emulator to streamline your development process by removing the need for the physical controllers. And we are finally getting this, you can see that this update was posted on October field where it was needed for a very long time. Also not to mention that the physical device is worth around like 40 or 50 US dollars. But anyways, this emulator allows you to iterate faster and test your game's controls in real time and directly within Studio. You can simulate inputs from PlayStation, Xbox and generic controllers directly in Studio so you can refine controls and gameplay seamlessly across multiple platforms. And right here you can see the video preview, where the person is actually moving the thumbstick and then entering the vehicle by using the controller emulator. Then there is the paragraph on how to enable this feature, which I'm gonna show later in studio. And then the features of the controller emulator. So we have an interactive gamepad controller plugin, where they say that the plugin features are fully interactive gamepad buttons, complete with a device dropdown that allows you to choose between different controllers. And you have these different ones like the PS4, PS5 and Xbox and the generic controller. And once I you can directly interact with the gamepad by dragging the thumbstick, pulling the triggers and clicking the buttons to simulate real controller inputs. Same as this person is doing in this video. And what's really nice about it is that it has a keyboard shortcuts that you can basically map to different controller buttons. Where this paragraph says that the plugin also supports keyboard shortcuts. During testing this allows you to simulate gamepad inputs by pressing specific keys on your keyboard. And with each shortcut mapping to the buttons, thumbstick and the triggers on the virtual controller. Using the virtual controller widget and also the 3D view. Then you have the custom keyboard mapping, where you can fully customize which keys simulate specific gamepad inputs, such as buttons, thumbsticks and triggers. And if you need to revert the original configuration, the restore defaults option allows you to quickly return them to the default key mapping, again as shown in this video. So you're already going to have a key map basically assigned to the controller that you can also modify whenever you want. And it's really nice that it's actually going to display on the controller emulator preview on the right. So it's really nice that you're going to have the thumbstick movement, but I don't think it's going to register how strongly you press the keys. Because whenever you drag the thumbstick, it's going to move your character, for example, a little bit slower than if you were to fully move them. Then we have the best practices, saying that currently the keyboard mappings can only be assigned to a single key. And modifiers like control shift or alt are not supported. So for example if you were to just press like ctrl and a it's not going to work yet and each key can only be mapped to one gamepad action meaning no two functions can share the same key binding and each controller has its own key mapping. And I'm going to hope that you can actually for example just share the key mappings between them because if you were to remap the whole button on one gamepad or switch rather between the PS4, PS5, Xbox and the generic one and then you'd have to rebind the keys again it would just be a lot of unnecessary work. And then we just have the how to get started. Where once you enable this feature, you just go to the test tab in studio, then select the controller under the emulator section, then press play to begin testing with the virtual gamepad. And there is also an alternative option to go to the test tab, then select the device, and selecting a game console from the drop down and the corresponding virtual controller will open the virtual controller automatically. And then there is the known issues which there is currently only one, saying that the keyboard mapping window does not have the scroll bar, so if there are more mappings than you can fit on the screen, you will need to resize the window to see them all. And something really neat is the looking into the future, where they basically just want to make a lot of enhancements and also share some plans to improve. One of which is the previously mentioned modifiers with the Ctrl, Shift and Alt to give you more flexibility. And then there is the mouse movement, where they are also excited to announce that they will be adding a support for mouse movement to simulate thumbstick controls. And that basically just answers my question on the key mapping from right here. And lastly there is an announcement on the VR emulation where they plan to release a VR emulator in studio, saying that it's also currently in progress, allowing you to simulate VR headsets and controllers. And of course stay tuned for updates and they look forward to hearing the feedbacks once this feature is available. 
So yeah, that's basically all of the death forum posts. Again, a feature like this was needed for a very long time, and I guess I don't need to use my Xbox controller anymore. And I am also really curious on if this controller emulator is also going to work on GUI. For example, to move across the selectable elements, because if you all know, designing user interface for Xbox is kind of a pain. But anyways, I'm just going to hop into Studio now. And well, this is a bit new, because I was using Studio today and I didn't have this page, but it's really nice to see Roblox actually roll out the new studio design. And it also started up kind of fast compared to the previous studio startup. But anyway, let's just go into an empty base plate. But now on how to actually enable the gamepad emulator, we need to go into file then beta features and then scroll down and find the gamepad emulator right here. Then just press on save and restart studio. And now after restarting we should have the gamepad emulator under this test tab. And it's actually right here. And here it actually is. And in the meantime I'm also hoping that Roblox will fix the docking system because it's kind of... yeah. I'm just going to move it right here. So by default it's just going to look like this. And we have the option to change from the generic to PS4. And it also changes the image which is really nice. Then the PS5 where this graphic seems to be kind of broken. But lastly there is the Xbox. And we can actually press on these buttons. And let's see, if I try to for example just press W, it's not really going to do anything, but I'm going to see this on a playtest. And whenever I'm pressing these buttons is actually emulating, you can see that my mouse is basically just right here, and I am also able to move my character. And I should also be able to move the thumbstick, and this was the thing that I was talking about previously, about the character moving slower, when you only move the thumbstick a little bit. So it's also pretty awesome that they well added this. But let's see the key mapping. And it's going to open this window right here, and this is the thing that I mentioned about the scroll. I basically just can't scroll through here, so I just need to resize the window. But while being in the Xbox controller, I can just for example change these keys to work on the numpad. And also I didn't save it because there is a save button on top, so I'm just going to cut that out from the video. But anyways, and there isn't really an indicator telling you that this was well saved, so that's just something on the UX part. I'm just going to do another playtest. And this is actually working from me pressing the numpad buttons, and it's not going to work on normal 1, 2, 3, and 4. So yeah, it didn't change the keybinds on these different controllers. I only changed them on the Xbox. So again, I'm going to hope that there is a way of exporting these keybind maps. But now let's see this on the device view by going into the test tab and then pressing on the device. So if I select the console and for example PS5, it is going to open the emulator menu automatically. And again, if I do a playtest, I am able to basically just control this. So let me just also add a script into the starter player scripts and just do a really quick context action service function. And I also made a video on this, so I'm going to link it down in the description. But I'm basically just going to get the context action service by doing the game then get service method, and then just context action service. Then I'm going to need a table of keys, which is just going to hold the enums, for example, key code and E. And then an input on the pad, which can be enum that key code, for example, button L1, which is I think the left trigger. Then I'm just going to have a local function, which can just be whatever. And I'm just going to bind these keys into the function by doing the context action service, then bind action, then the action name can be whatever, again, then the function to bind is going to be we, then we don't want to create the touch button, and then the rest of these arguments are going to be the keys from this table. So I can just do unpack and then the keys. And here I'm just going to say print and then firing function. And again I'm going to do a playtest. So if I press R, this was actually the button L1, it's basically just going to fire the function. And if I close the emulator now and press E, it's going to fire the function on my keyboard. But if I press R, it's not going to print out anything. So I need to have the emulator open for this to basically just work. And right now I can disable the device and also delete this local script. And I'm just going to make whatever screen GUI because I also want to see if this one is going to work with the selectable property. So again I'm going to open the controller and again just do a playtest. Where normally, if I just press the backslash or the pipe key on my keyboard, which is above the enter and under the return, it's going to activate the UI navigation, where I'm going to be able to navigate through the UI with, for example, my arrow keys. And I don't exactly remember which button it was on the gamepad, so I'm just going to have to press random buttons now. And it was actually Q. And this actually also works. So it was pretty awesome that you can basically open the UI navigation even on the emulator. And lastly, I also wanted to check because if you go to the starter GUI, you are going to have the virtual cursor mode. 
where if I enable it, it should give me a virtual cursor that basically just works the same as a mouse input, except it's going to be on a pad. And how you can enable it is I believe should be through the A key. So if I press 9, it's actually just going to create the virtual cursor that I can basically just move around and press different UI elements with. But now that I am looking at it, it's also enabling whenever I press any other input, so I might actually be wrong on that and you guys can correct me down in the comments, because well I haven't used that feature in a while. But anyways, that's basically going to be everything for today, so again leave a like to support the channel, and also check out my Patreon page, but yeah, thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day and see ya guys!